All right. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you guys for joining us on a holiday. We can't wait to tackle the last pillar of successful business, all built on mindset. We've gone after recruiting. We've gone after retention. We've gone after duplication. We've done all the things. And now we're going to talk about leadership because network marketing is going to be funneled through leadership. And the beautiful thing about residual income is if you are raising other leaders, you're going to work yourself out of a job and it's going to be a beautiful thing. Here on Team Revive, you guys see different leaders be able to come on and host different events. We all are able to give our strengths to a team and use our uh, skill set, right? Our strengths to benefit one another. And one of my points are readers are leaders. Guys, my husband has told me this for years. I personally am not a good reader. Like Krista got on to me for years. When we started network marketing, she could not believe the fact that I went through school. I was a straight A student. I did not read books all the way through. I would start books. I would not finish them. It was like my Achilles heel. Every New Year's Eve, my resolution is to read one book a month. I've failed every year, every single year. But this year, I am not failing it, okay? I've finished one so far. I'm on number two, and we're in month five. But I will read 12 books, I promise you. And actually, because I'm reading this one now, I'll probably read more than 12, truthfully. This book is so so good. It's called Successful Women Think Differently. And Chris and I were talking about the book and she's like, it's actually not a title of a book I would normally pick up. I was like, me either. Actually, I'm not drawn. Like, I don't even really like look at myself or think I want to be a more successful woman. But this woman is a believer. She's going to be one of our conventions. She is the keynote convention speaker, I believe. It is so good. So if you are not reading this with us, I encourage you to get this book. And I'm only on the third chapter and I already want to go back and read what I've already read because it's so good. So I just wanted to share a couple things from it, but it's talking about success, right? So when you think of a leader, you think, okay, they have some type of success. How many of you guys on this call can say, yeah, okay, I'm a leader. Um, hopefully you have belief in yourself that you are a leader because whether you're leading one person or you're leading a thousand people, you are leading someone. If you're a mom, you're leading your children, right? We have people every day who are looking up to us and we can continue to get better in some way or another. And so one of the biggest thing is how do we define success? What does success look like to us? Is it a number? Is it a rank? Is it a status? Is it a dollar amount? Is it after you've had a perfect day with your children? Is it a job? You guys have to figure out how do you define success? In this book, it talks about success is living your life's purpose and embracing resilience and joy as you do. I love that this book starts to talk about, you know, many years ago, women were actually happier, but now we have so many more things. We have so many more cars. We have all the things that we think would make us happy. But if we're losing our joy, is that truly success? And to tap into those things. Although our purpose often brings us joy, it's not about us. It is always about using your strengths in the service of others. Interplexus. I can do plexus because it's not about me. It's about serving others. I can wake up every day and know that I have a purpose in this business because we're helping people feel better. We're helping people get out of debt. We have a gift of health and we have a gift of wealth and both of them have endless possibilities in plexus. So have you decided what purpose you have here, and we like to call it your why, right? To be firmly rooted in what is your purpose. We each are here on purpose. We have a purpose to fulfill. And when we're able to attach that to our daily tasks, we go so much farther. I am earning a lot of things. I don't even like to say that. Like, I feel like, oh, um, but I do. I earn a lot of things. I'm on the leaderboard, but sometimes I get discouraged. 
Why? Because some of you guys aren't hitting your goals. And for me, I feel like, oh man, I'm not hitting the success I want as a leader because to me, a good leader helps others win too. So unless I'm seeing others on my team win the way they want to, I'm pushed a whole lot further. A lot of times I'm earning those things because it's us linking arms together and being able to run together. How did I become a Sapphire and a leader on Plexus? I simply did the daily tasks and invited others into the journey with me. I didn't actually look at myself as a leader for a long time. I would say I have... I love to teach and I have more of a teaching gift, but I didn't really do that because I'm like, aren't I, isn't everybody doing the things like this? These are the things that we're supposed to do every day. So if you are a leader, you should be consistent. As soon as you're not consistent, your credibility is diminishing. So the more that you're consistent, the credibility is going to continue to build, but you're also building trust in your team members. Your team members are like, oh man, she's serious about this. Oh man, she really does care about me. She cares about her business and she cares to change other people's lives too. Leaders don't just look at the success for themselves, but they're looking to really outwork themselves or they want people who surpass themselves. And I love that in Plexus, we can truly do that. <laughs> like, I love that, she, like, even in this cruise contest, Krista would not mind me sharing this. I have higher points than her and she loves that. That's the sign of a good leader right there. She's over there cheering me on and she's like, you're set up perfectly for this contest. You run hard, you go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not here to compete with anyone. I'm here to say, let's all rise to the best of our abilities. And I want people who far surpass me. Um, a lot of times you guys hear us say, watch a training every single day. I am a huge believer in watching a training every single day. But if a training is actually making it worse and you're not applying the training, stop watching them. Watch a training that you like, that you can apply and then watch another training and then apply. So in order to grow in your business and in your leadership, you have to be applying what you're watching. Do I think every single training that you watch, you're gonna love every single minute of it and be able to implement it? Nope, because guess what? You have a business for yourself. You get it to make it look like whatever you want. You get to work whatever hours that you want. You get to say yes to what you want and you get to say no to whatever you want. But you're not by yourself. You have a whole team supporting you, ready to train you, teach you, support you when you feel down and a support system there. So you have a business for yourself, but you're not in it by yourself. So get there, watch the trainings, apply what does work for you, but know that if you're saying no to some things, cause you're like, that's not really me, evaluate it. Is it fear? Is it something you really should be doing that you should be taking steps towards? Or is it really not for you? For me, I will never have a time blocked amount of hours to sit down and work for two to four hours. Never in my history of Plexus have I ever had that. Does it mean that I absolutely don't work two to four hours? No, I have to get the work in somewhere, but it looks like I wake up and I work for 30 minutes. I'm at a stoplight and I'm responding to a couple messages. Eek. Did I just submit it? It's truth. Y'all know it. I'm like over here like, oh, driving. I'll send you the video when I park. Like, it's just, I work on the go and that's how I function. But other people can't function that way. Krista has to have her alone time. She gets in her office and it's go time. So know yourself, but also know that sometimes we're using excuses to stop us from the very thing that's going to take us to the next level. I love it when I realize that a lot of times we can say, what if? What if somebody makes fun of me? What if I fail? What if they don't have enough money? Instead of taking that what if, change that what if to even if. Even if people make fun of me, even if it takes me five years to get to Diamond, even if it takes me 10 years to get to Diamond, I am going to get there. Do not allow any obstacle from stopping you from what you know you're called to. 
when you know what your vision is and what your purpose is, those obstacles are going to look fun. And they're going to be like, all right, hit another roadblock. How do we get around this one? Because I know I can get around this, right? Pray, seek the Lord, ask the Lord, how am I going to change this circumstance? We have to have positive mindsets. At one point in this book, probably the chapter I'm on currently, it talks about joy. And I was like, this is awesome. Because most of the time, it's our mindset that gets us into the trash. And we're super negative, And we're talking down about ourselves. And all of a sudden, Plexus did this, or the, why couldn't we do this? Or even, okay, you get free shipping or 10% off. Did somebody say like, oh, why don't we get 10% off and free shipping? No, a leader is like, this that's how you speak about the promo which if anybody complained about the promo right now i think just mind blowing how much the promo is should have started that off if you're not running these last few days like they are getting plexus so cheap right now a dollar enrollment they get 10 percent off or free shipping they the welcome packs themselves are discounted and all the things they can plug into i'm like i'm reaching out like that and people can catch your joy and your vision as you're portraying that to each of them. So make sure that you feel that excitement. And if you don't, it has to come from within, right? What's in our heart is going to spill out and get to the secret place. Allow the Lord to speak purpose and destiny into your heart of why you're here. And then you're going to be able to impact others. It's not going to just stay with you. It's going to overflow into the other people. So find a good book. Readers are leaders. Stay consistent. Know that you are leading someone, whether you have a littler team or you have a huge, large team. Take your business as it is now and look for the long haul. See your vision. Treat the people that God has entrusted you with now and steward it well, because we all know the principle. Whatever you're faithful with in the little, he's going to give you more because you stewarded that little. All right. All right. We have awesome things at store. We have a guest speaker, but I'm going to pass it over to my good friend, Krista, to share a little bit from her heart. That was so good. And I've had so many chuckles here looking at my notes as you've literally hit on so many things that I have written down, like right here, entrusted with little can be trusted with much. I'm like, well, Morgan hit that one too. I mean, like literally <laughs> so many of my notes, but that's okay. I have a couple stories in my heart that I'll be sharing tonight. And we get to hear from Carice in a minute too. And just her journey, as soon as she started sharing her heart, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what week I want you to talk on. At the end of the month, we're talking about leadership and I want you to share about this. But I think there's two kinds of network marketers and rightly so. Like it doesn't matter which category you fall in. The beauty of this is you get to make it what you need it to be or what you want it to be, right? And for many, this is is a perfect extra hobby. When I first started, Chad said, hey, whatever you make, you can spend. And I was like, perfect. Like I was so ecstatic to have shopping money. It had been years since I had shopped for myself or my children. So I was gung ho. A few months, a few months went by, the paychecks went up and suddenly he was like, actually, we're going to change that. This is now our income. <laughs> and it totally shifted. But either way is beautiful. And so sometimes you have to at least first identify what is this for you? What is the Lord leading you to do with this? Is this meant to be a hobby on the side that's extra money? Perfect. Or is he calling you to make this a career? And that's going to dictate how you're stewarding it and what kind of like hat to put on when you come towards your business. Now, I think either way, you're a leader, whether you've enrolled one or a hundred, you are a leader, but to have the self-awareness to know what this is for you, because it can shift something. I want you to even think to yourself, do you come to these types of things, to your business in general, to the Team Revive page? Are you like, hey, I'm on a team and that's the leader. Do you look at Morgan and say, this is the leader of the team I'm on? Or do you think of yourself as a leader who is coached by someone who's just gone beyond where you currently are? I hope that you're able as soon as possible to think of yourself as the leader of your team. You will probably find yourself thinking a little bit differently. Instead of asking, who I wonder when my upline is going to have another promo, or I like, I wonder when they're going to have another giveaway, or I wonder what they're going to do for 100 PV Club, or I wonder if they'll run a discount. 
your wheels are turning as to like tuning into like, Lord, what does my team need? And there's creativity like flowing inside you, thinking strategically as the leader of your team to offer the sales, to offer the promos. I remember that switch in me when I started delegating a certain amount of my paychecks. At first, it was my Friday paychecks. Whatever I got on a Friday, that is what I was sewing back into my team. Um, but the, it was in this shift around senior goal of realizing, okay, I'm a leader. Now that scared the bejeebies out of me. It still does today. <laughs> like literally I was telling Morgan earlier today, I was fighting just mental warfare, knowing that I needed to talk on leadership, desiring to talk on leadership while also still feeling like I have so much to learn when it comes to being a leader. It's kind of like being a mom. Moms out there, don't you feel like there's still so much more you could do for your kids? You love them so much. And you're just like, oh, there's just so much more I want to teach them. And did I give them enough hugs today? And did they like the meals that I'm preparing for them? I'm that way. I'm constantly like, there's got to be more I could do. Well, I feel that way as a leader to a team. My heart is constantly like, oh, I want to do so much more, but I only have so much time in a day. And it's hard for me to release that because I so desire to steward this well. But I, I just so want to empower you to think like a leader. What is God calling your team to be? What is the culture of your team? What is he naming your team? What is the mission and vision of your team? It shifts from like, I, I sell supplements on social media to no, I'm leading a team of ladies with this mission and a vision that's bigger than myself right? It starts to shift as you grow in leadership. And it's something that does grow. You can't necessarily just, it's not like all of a sudden, poof, there it is, right? It's something that you're developing in yourself. And as you're developing personally, that influence is growing. Leadership is influence for good and for bad, right? Everything you do and say has an influence and has an impact for good or for bad. When you show up on social media, you are a leader because you have people that watch your posts. All the more then there is, what's the word I'm looking for? Accountability. Mm, there, there's just a standard, right? That we need to walk in because we're representing Christ. We're representing an industry, right? And so much more. When my kids drive my car, I let them know, hey, it says Plexus on the back. Please drive safely and carefully because you're representing my company. So drive that really well, right? Well, the same goes for us. If we're having a bad day, I don't rep I don't really recommend like ranting on social media. It's negatively affecting your leadership and your trust. You know, so often how we show up to our team, our customers, the people who follow us on social media, the people we see in life, it's like making a deposit in your bank account. Have you ever done a withdrawal and you got a notification letting you know that you've been charged because you overdrew? overdrafted, overdid something. Have you gotten that notification? All I know is I've gotten that notification way too many times. There is a season where that was a regular part of our life and the pit in my stomach that I would feel when we had spent too much money that we didn't have. It can be like that when you're growing this business. There can be times that you're like, okay, I need six friends to join me and try the pink drink and it's crickets. All that means is it's time to make some more deposits. It's not time to make a withdrawal yet, right? Or maybe you're rallying the team. We're going to charge the mountain and we're going for senior Ruby, whatever it is, right? And maybe that pull isn't there. It just simply means it's time to make some more deposits. When you are leading a team, you care more about seeing your people go silver, senior silver, gold, right? As you're helping develop these people beneath you, your goals inevitably come to pass. But more than that, like, yes, they are going to naturally, your business will grow as you help people reach their goals, right? But there are those beautiful moments where it's a call to action season, where you rally the team together. And when you have a team that's been poured into, loved on, you're like coaching them through, right? Like coaching so much more than just how to do a business. Have you found that? So often we end up talking about the Lord and marriage and life and finances. So you're like sewing into your people. You're doing giveaways or whatever. Like you've been putting deposits in. Your team will show up for you when it's time to rally the troops because you've made that deposit into people, right? 
They trust you. The influence is there. It is so worth it to make sure that you're taking the time to show up on your social media, to show up for your team, to show up with your customers in a way that's putting the deposits in, that's consistent, like Morgan said, where you're developing and you're building trust with your people. Because then that much more, when now it's your turn that you're going after something, people are right there up to bat. They're like, yes, we're all in. We want to see you reach this. Like it's the least we can do for all you've done for us, right? It's this beautiful um, camaraderie and a beautiful journey. I was talking with Carice just recently, and I want her to unmute here in a second and share but I watched this transpire in her journey. She's newer to the business, as I'm sure she'll mention. But watching her journey, really discovering for herself the culture that's on Team Revive. Impact over sales, people over points. You can say it again and again, but sometimes they're the working out of that process for it to get lodged into your heart. So, Carice, I would love for you to share and touch on what the Lord did within your heart. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, I have grown to very quickly just love this team. And I, I always have. So I, I've been like a, I, I've been a customer for a couple of years. And I don't know what came over me in March. And it wasn't the iPad. <laughs> but like, <laughs> something came over me. And I was like, I might as well just try, you know, and I met all my goals and I won an iPad and I was like, holy smokes, this is amazing. Um, and then I also won the revive retreat and which also was amazing. And I thought like, oh, this will just be like a great retreat where we get to have like girl time. <laughs> like little, I didn't know what to expect, you know, and that's not wrong. And it was a lot of girl time, but like, man, everything about it was a challenge. Like getting there was a challenge. I had my eight month old son with me. That was a challenge, like everything. And the Lord was just like convicting me of like mindsets where I thought, man, I have not challenged the way that I've thought about life or business or money or friendships in a very long time. <laughs> and one of the things that was touched on was the importance of knowing your season. And so it came back from the retreat and everyone is like, yes, like let's run. Okay. The cruise drops, like, let's go for it. And I come back from the retreat and one of my enrollments let me know that she had to quit the business due to health reasons. And I was like, okay, like that's still okay. We're still good. And then a few more people just started, it felt like everything was just like dropping like flies. I was like, Lord, what's going on? And the Lord was like, well, okay, you have to look at where your heart is at. And I kind of really had to take a look at, okay, heart check. What is my motivation and what is my season? And I thought, wow, I have made the, the perks, <laughs> the focus and it wasn't coming out clean and it wasn't coming out like love. And I was not focusing on the right thing. And the Lord so gently was like, it's not your season to run right now. You have to lay it down. So that's when I contacted uh, Krista and I was like, I'm laying it down. <laughs> and like I could still win it, but like the Lord is so kind to make sure that our hearts are pure to not allow, like so kind of him to not allow me to go beyond my capacity and just being such a good father in that way. Um, but what's interesting is I started asking the Lord, okay, help me to love people well. And there was a gal that um, we go to the same church and I found out that she had enrolled through enrolled to Plexus through someone on team revive. I don't know who, and I saw her picture and I was like, oh my gosh. So way back in the day, I'd asked her if she ever wanted to join Plexus. And she was like, oh, it's too expensive for me. And I had forgotten about her. And after I laid down the, just laid down my whole business, she sends me a message and was like, hey, you've inspired me to do the reset. And was asking me for help about the reset. Now she's not enrolled under me. She's still active. So whoever enrolled her, <laughs> 
you know, is the one that is receiving, quote unquote, the benefit of her order, which I don't even like thinking of it in that way. But again, it was a heart check of like, there's nothing like in the natural that I would benefit other than just loving her well and helping her understand how she can make the reset work well for her. So I spent the next two days troubleshooting the reset because day one, she was excited. Day two is hard for everyone and everyone wants to quit. At least most people do. I did. And okay, so how can we make the collagen taste better? She's like, I hate it. What can I do? You know? And, (laughs) and it was just this beautiful moment of like, of just friendship and it really and that actually happened twice by the way another gal on like this mother's group had reached out like what can I do about this like pregnancy symptom and I was like oh I do supplements and she's like you mean plexus oh I take that I was like sure I'll help you so I'm walking her through that she doesn't even know who her sponsor is like so there's these people in my life that it just but it felt like the Lord like how like the Lord to be like will you love people well Like, if you are faithful, the excellence will take care of itself and just being like the daily faithful. And I still feel like it is my season to rest. It is my season to just be quiet and still, still consistent, but really owning the trainings for myself. And no one's looking other than like, I'll post on social media and I'm still doing the reach outs and everything, but I, One thing that really stood out to me was, I want to say maybe like two months ago, I think Jenny was sharing, she likened her team to a garden. And she said every year she has tulips that just pop up. And every time, like every month in her team, like everyone's placing order and it's like there are tulips popping up. And so I thought, I have this little baby team. (laughs) They're my little tiny tulips. And sometimes plants need plant food, you know, like miracle grow. Like it's not enough to just like, like Christy, you said, you're making a deposit, but like, what's the quality of the deposit? Like sometimes you have to add plant food to the water to like feed your plants, you know? (laughs) I'm like, yes, I was checking in on my team and I was really pushing to make it grow. And there just wasn't grace for that. But man, has there been so much grace to so so richly in really small increments and the small people that like I mean I'll probably never see with them the benefit of sewing into them but it also ignited this fresh love where now I'm reaching out to people who are not on my team where there is an opportunity for them to still join my team but it's from a pure heart of I'm excited and I'm going to share this regardless if you join or not. I don't need anything from you. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm not trying to win a prize off of your investment. (laughs) And that I think is the biggest thing. And there's so much grace to just be still in that place with the Lord of just being faithful with the little and letting him take care of the outcome. So good. I love you. And I love that we are a team that celebrates that that is true success. True success is being obedient to the Lord, you guys. True success is stewarding people well. True success is loving people really well, right? Um, I I know you guys have heard me share, but that was a necessary part in a season where I was quote unquote stuck for over two years, but the Lord was convicting my heart. Like if you stayed stuck or even go backwards, but I asked you to stay here for the next 10 years, because I know of a person that will be impacted by this 10 years from now, would you stay the course simply because I've asked you to, or will you only stay the course if you get what you want when you want it? And I, you know, I, he had to reveal like how self-focused I had become in the journey. It was about what I wanted when I wanted it and too easily, especially in sales of any kind, whether you sell cars, houses, I don't care what you sell. It's very easy for us to fall into manipulation, not wanting to, but because we want to hit our goals so hard, right? And then all of a sudden now we are twisting or shifting or pressuring in a conversation. And I'm on, I'm still on the journey. The Lord has to correct me to this day of evaluating how am I showing up to people online, all the things. 
Um, but the grace is there to, to do this well, right? And to be on the journey of like, Lord, if you were a network marketer way back in the day when you wore your Jesus sandals and you roamed the earth and you were healing people, like what would it look like? And if you look at the ministry of Jesus, I mean, it's the best example of leadership, right? Um, some of you have heard the story. I know I shared it at the Plexus Leaders Retreat last year, both stories I shared that I feel led to share tonight. But when Judah had his brain injury, um, it was very traumatic. There was lots of circumstances around it um, and how we were treated, especially in the hospital was very traumatic. And um, I had been up all night with Judah, still in the throes of like, what just happened? Our family had been questioned and investigated at two in the morning. It had been a rough night. Police watched us at all times. And I was alone in the hospital that next morning, Chad needed to go return to the rest of our kids and just figure out what we were doing. Um, a neurosurgeon came in with a team of assistants helping her and she just didn't like us. I mean, it's really just the bottom line. I don't think she cared for us much. And her good morning message was, we're gonna see too that your children are taken from you. She didn't know me from Adam. Um, but that was her message. She had jumped to conclusions based on the amount of bleeding in Judah's brain. And likely if I had been in her shoes, I would have assumed the same. She sees a lot of tough cases, I'm sure. So she looks at Judah and off she goes and off her little assistants go out the room. I mean, she came in like a, like a tornado, knocked me over and off she went. And I sat there weeping and unsure of like, what is even happening? We didn't know if Judah would even survive. They kind of said, if he does make it, he'll be brain dead, blind, and deaf. So I sat there for a moment and in walks a lady who would probably be ter termed a custodian or a janitor. And she asked if she could clean our room. And I said, sure. I felt I'm such a people pleaser. So I'm apologizing that I'm crying. Like I'm trying to like clean myself up. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And she walks up to me and she looks me square in the eye, got really like in my bubble. And she points her finger to me and she said, don't cry, just pray. If you believe in him and you trust in him, nothing is impossible. And then she just proceeded to clean the room. And I was kind of I, in awe, like even that she spoke with such authority to me and kind of spat me out of it. Like, oh my goodness, that's right. Where'd my faith go? You know, she's praying under her breath as she cleans the room. She empties the trashes, she mops the floor. And I found myself able to eat food for the first time since everything had started to unravel. All of a sudden I found, I was like able to eat. The anxiety was subsiding. A stillness and a peace was coming over the room. and off she went. She was all done cleaning our room. I thanked her. I didn't see her again for the whole rest of my stay. I kept waiting for this janitor to come back so I could thank her. I never saw her again, not that stay or any other stay. She was an angel, right? And what stuck out to me, I, I firmly believe it's very possible that I met an angel. If I didn't, and she turned out to be an employee of that hospital, she easily could have said, I am just a janitor. Really, it's just the big wigs, right? It's the surgeons and the nurses. They have the jobs that make a difference. They're the ones saving lives, right? They're the ones that get paid the big money to do these big things. They had all this education. They're successful. They got the nice cars. They are the ones that are leaders in this building, but she owned her leadership, not based on her title or her income or anything. She owned it by choosing to be present for people. And out of anybody in that hospital, out of all those nurses and out of all the doctors, it's her that I remember. Yes, those doctors were needed to help save Judah's life, right? And the nurses, they were amazing. Like they, they really are amazing. I'm in awe of all that nurses do and the way they come along hurting people and hurting patients in these times. But that janitor, I tell you what, 
She chose to own her leadership. And it is too easy on this process to say, well, I'm just a silver. I should make sure they're listening to the diamonds or the emeralds. I'm just a senior silver. I'm just a gold. What am I? No, you are a person with so much value inside of you. And there's people in, in your sphere that I will never meet, that Morgan will never meet, that none of us will ever meet. You're going to come into contact with someone in a grocery store, at the bank. Do people go to banks anymore? I don't know. Where do we go? Where do people go these days? <laughs> Clearly I don't get out much. When you're <laughs> at your kid's soccer game, wherever you go, <laughs> you are interacting with people. And I want to just spur all of us on to own our leadership the way that janitor did. She chose to be present and make a difference right where she's at because it was about people. Her job had nothing to do with mopping that floor that day, right? Kingdom-minded leadership cares more about the people than the prophet. I care far more about Carice, the health of her family, marriage, time management, their move across the country, than whether or not she's producing income for me and going to go gold this month. I'm excited for if, when the Lord continues to reveal to her the journey he desires for her in this journey. But I've had a long journey of learning what an open-handed leadership looks like. I care way more to spur Carice on to go after the center of God's will for her life. What is Holy Spirit saying to you? I want you to do it. If he tells her quit plexus fully and go paint for a living, I want her to go paint for a living. If he says do nothing forever, just raise your babies. Cool. Like <laughs> that is literally how I feel when I run into people at church. I, or like out and about, there are times that people will say, I'm so sorry. Like I haven't joined you. I'm like, I don't care at all. Like I love you. And yes, I think you'd love the products, but I never want people to be around me and be like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not working harder. I'm so sorry. I'm not doing this or that. I'm like, I don't care about that. Are you loving Jesus? And how are things going in your life? How's your marriage? How can I pray for you? Like that is true leadership showing up to love people. Well, it is about people and it's not about profit. Now. Yes. Part of the journey is setting goals. I love setting goals. I love it. And I love hitting goals, but I want to do it right. And there's been plenty of times that I've looked back and I thought, ah, I could have done that better, right? Oof, I got too far into what I wanted when I wanted it rather than how can I pour into you? What is it that is in your heart for this month? How do we go after that together, right? If you also watch the person of Jesus, he was rooted in humility and the heart of a servant. Leadership is a laying down of your life. That was tough for me. I remember thinking like, I'm already giving out my life to these children. <laughs> and now I go to social media and I can't just mindlessly scroll because now it's people needing things from me. Like it wasn't like I was getting all these messages of people pouring into me. It was like questions or going through hard times or complaints or like it was all of it, right? Because that's leadership. But in the beginning, that was a hard pivot because Facebook had been this place of like just community, right? It was just like, oh, they had a baby. Oh, cool. Oh, they got married. That's fun. Like that's all it was. And it shifted into now I'm a leader. I have questions to answer. And then the further my leadership grew within Team Revive, the further it grew within corporate, right? The more people that were not on our team asked questions. And just like with Carissa's journey, does it matter that they're not on my team? It doesn't matter to me at all. I could care less. Like... I'm here to pour out, but within that, then the larger your team grows, do we need to stay full? <laughs> you will have more excuses than ever to not stay full, but you can't pour from an empty cup. It is all the more necessary to be in the word, to be in the secret place, to read books, to grow in leadership. I have, um, two leadership books right by my bed right now. The self-aware leader, I think is what it's called. I've never read so many pages of a book on a vacation in my life. I could not put it down. It is so good by John Maxwell. Um, and I'm reading Built to Last. But you, you have to stay full that much more when you're pouring out, which leads to the second story. And we'll kind of wrap this up. And this one too, I had shared at leader, Leaders Retreat. So I apologize if you were there and you heard it. Um, but while we were still living in Minnesota before moving, Chad had been saying for years, he's a Minnesota boy, he wanted to see where the Mississippi River started. 
I thought that was the lamest thing ever. Like I'm being really transparent. I was just like, who cares where the river started? Like it's a river. <laughs> like that's so weird. But he was like so proud of the Mississippi and like, I don't know, whatever. It's a cool river. It goes through the whole country. That's awesome. I don't want to drive that far to see where it starts. But for Father's Day, I'm pretty sure it had to have been Father's Day because there wasn't snow on the ground. Um, I surprised him and we as a family drove hours <laughs> with miserable children. All of them were like, where are we going? I mean, we were out in the boondies. We couldn't find any place to just get a coffee. Like we drove so far and my flesh was so weak. I just thought this is dumb. I had the worst attitude ever as we tried to make our way into the wilderness. And even once we got to the not campground, kind of a campground, I don't know, national park, you still had to like weave your way through, find the parking lot. All of it just seemed ridiculous. I couldn't believe there's all these people there to see where the Mississippi starts. I'm telling you what though, we start making our way down the path to find this place. And as soon as we got there, I was wrecked and I will never be the same. It is the image that stays inside me. We came to the start of the Mississippi River. What do you see? A trickle, like the lamest, skinniest little trickle. Like you could like jump across it. It is just the cutest, tiniest little stream that trickles out of still waters. It's in the middle of nowhere. There's no flashy signs. There's no neon lights. There's no like, what are those lights at Disney? Like this are all in the sky. Like you're like, there's Disney clearly because the whole sky is glowing. Like there's none of it saying, here I am. Come see me. I am the start of the great Mississippi River that, I mean, like if you look at the industries and all the different things that happen along the Mississippi River, it's wild, right? Homes all along it, boat tours and dinner things. Like there's so many things. It's this lake. It was the stillest waters. There weren't boats on it, houses on it. It was just still waters. And now the overflow of the still waters, a little stream started. And if you follow the path, as it goes, other rivers start to join in with it and it gradually gets wider and wider and wider and becomes what most of us know it to be, this pretty wild river that makes its way. It to me is, I, I sat there staring at it and I was like, this is who I want to be. I don't want to be the one that says, look at me, I'm the leader. I don't want to be a leader of followers, right? I don't want to have a lot of people like, yeah, she's the leader, whatever she says we'll do. No, I want to partner with others. I want to be coming out of the fullness of still waters into this trickle, humility tucked away in the secret place where no one can find me. If they want to see how did Krista make it to diamond? I want them to find still waters, right? And it's out of the trickle of that partnering with others that together Team Revive makes our way into what it is today. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about him and I want it to be about you. But it shaped me so deeply. I want to be like the Mississippi River. Here my flesh was so weak and I had no idea the Lord was like, just wait, dear daughter, I have a lesson that you need to learn over in the still waters. But leadership is no longer about you. It's just not. It is the laying down of your life. And sometimes it's the laying down of your reputation. Sometimes it's the laying down of your desires. As your team grows, convention is no longer about what you can learn. It's about what can you get your team to for them to learn, right? It's about who's getting on stage and how can I get to the front of that stage to take their picture as they're celebrated on that stage. It's not about what retreat can you get to. Now you're dreaming about what retreat am I offering for my team? Like it is just this pouring out continually, but it means you have to be rooted in still waters. You will need time in the secret place that much more as you lay your life down to serve others, just like Christ modeled for us so well to do, right? I wrote this down as we close out. Your values determine your sacrifice. It's been something just brewing in my heart. I haven't even fully formulated where the Lord's going with this, but I've been reflecting on it, even in the little things. Um, you know, if we value sports for kids, we make the sacrifice to spend money on it and give a lot of time towards it. Isn't it fascinating? There's times that we've signed up our kids like for soccer that halfway in, we are like, what were we thinking? This is so much time, right? 
or you value getting in the presence of the Lord? Will you, by golly, will get your kids to church, right? Or you're going to do devotions and times of worship and prayer in your home, right? What we value, we're willing to make a sacrifice for. But look at Christ. What he valued, he was willing to make a sacrifice for. Can you believe that he valued us that much that his sacrifice was himself unto death? What you value, you'll sacrifice for. And yes, sometimes it's going to be like, I value freedom for my family. And so you make a sacrifice to work your business. I value time, time freedom, financial freedom. I value, I want to be debt free. So you make a sacrifice for a short period of time, right? To cut back spending, to go after growth in your business. I look at our journey. We made a sacrifice for a short amount of time. I remember asking the kids, hey, mama's going to be busier for a season. And so I had events every Thursday night after they went to bed. I started working two hours a day. I treated it like a career. I went all in knowing I'm going to make a sacrifice for a season to set us up for the long haul. What we value will make a sacrifice for. But may that be said, though, of people, because we value people so much, we're willing to make the sacrifice to show up for them, right? And to grow and be everything we can be. Leadership requires sacrifice, a dying to yourself, a dying to reputation, but we have Christ as that ultimate example. Let me just wrap up in prayer and then we'll carry on. Lord, thank you so much for this team. I thank you for the culture that you have birthed within our journey. And I just ask you for further wisdom and clarity and divine ideas that you would be our teacher and our leader showing us how to do this your way. That you would correct us, that you would stir our hearts, that you'd reveal the season for each of us. What season are we in, Lord? Is it time to run? Is it time to learn? Is it time to grow? That you are, would stir our hearts even towards what books should we be listening? listening to, reading? What should we be tuning our ears towards? Is it time to be in the secret place even more? How can we steward our time better? How do we steward our families better? How do we steward your finances better? We want to tune our ears to you, Lord. We want to do this well, representing you well and representing this industry well, changing the face of what it looks like. God, as we end this month going after a cruise, going after rank up goals, going after these things that are birthed and stirred in our hearts. I pray that we would do it well in a way that's pleasing to you and that glorifies your name in a way that benefits others offering this gift. God, stir the hearts. You know exactly who needs to join and when they need to join. We ask you to stir the hearts, to stir our hearts to know what to say and when to say it. Stir our hearts for the people that we need to connect with. Stir our hearts for the post that needs to go on social media and the time to post it. May our words be your words, making an impact and a ripple effect wherever we go. I ask you, Lord, for clarity and unction and overflow that we would show up seeing the people right in front of us, putting our phones away and looking up at the people that are around us. But that also while we're on social media that we show up to be a light and to make a difference, owning leadership and owning influence right in the here and now. We thank you for your provision. We thank you that you're our provider. We thank you there's no striving in you. We thank you for the grace to do all things well. We praise your name. Amen. I love you guys. If you have any questions on tonight, shoot me a message. I'll get this recording on YouTube and we'll talk soon. I don't want to end though. I kind of just want to like hug y'all and have a sleepover. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Christy, I see you over there. Oh, I love you guys. We'll see y'all soon. And Carice, thank you so much for sharing your heart. Proud of you. See you guys.